organic farming. Let us see about the nematicidal fungi. This nematicidal fungi actually they suppress nematodes in the soil and helps for the healthy growth of the plants. Pesilomyces lilacinus is registered in India as a nematicidal fungus. It controls nematodes, especially Milayandogaine, Globodera, Heterodera, Reniform nematode, Burrowing, and Citrus nematode. Verticillium chlamydosporium, this is also registered as nematicidal fungus. Especially, it is uh, very effective against Milaidogene in Cognata, that is the uh, root knot nematode. Very problematic, especially in the polyhouses and uh, for many vegetables. So, then coming to the bacterial biopesticides, these bacterial biopesticides, very important one is Pseudomonas fluorescens. It is both biofertilizer and biopesticide. Because it is basically a plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, it is very effective on rice, wheat, especially to promote the growth and it also controls various diseases, various fungal diseases, especially fungal diseases it controls. It is also advised in hydroponic cultivation on various flowering plants for good flower color and petal retention like carnation, roses and all. Even many ornamental plants, it is uh, recommended uh, for the healthy establishment of the plants. In vegetables also, it is recommended for seed treatment, seedling treatment, soil application and foliar sprays. In pulses also, it is recommended a lot. So, it is recommended in cereals, pulses, oil seeds, flowering plants, fruit crops, almost all crops it is recommended as plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and to control fungal diseases. Not only fungal diseases, some bacterial diseases also it can control. Moreover, it can improve immunity and resistance to the plants like uh, Thrips parvis prinus in chilies. Again, as Thrips parvis prinus, it improves resistance and develops immunity in the chili plants. That's why it is recommended there also. So many formulations of trico, uh, pseudobonus fluorescence are uh, registered with CIBRC in India with various concentrations. In combination also, pseudomonas fluorescence in combination with other biofertilizers and biopesticides also, it is recommended. It is compatible with other fungal biopesticides like Trichoderma viridae and other bacterial biofertilizers like Azotobacter, PSP, ZSP. In cotton also it is recommended against uh, diseases, fungal diseases. It is also recommended against some bacterial diseases also. Nematodes also, it is recommended against nematodes also. So in organic farming, Pseudomonas fluorescence is very very important as biofertilizer, biopesticide, nematicide, immunity booster, so many actions it with so many actions it has proved that it is very worth to use in organic farming. Coming to the entomopathogenic bacteria, the one Pseudomonas fluorescence which we have seen is a bacteria which acts as plant growth promoting rhizobacteria antifungal and antibacterial. But these entomopathogenic bacteria, they kill insects. Most important one is Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis variety Kustaki, it is a patho variety. Kustaki is effective against Lepidopteran insects, especially Helicorpa, Spodoptera, hairy caterpillars, many borers in tomato, cabbage, brinjal, okra, cereals, pulses and fruit crops. Many formulations of Bacillus thuringiensis variety Kustaki are available. Both spore formulations and toxin formulations and combined formulations are also available. Bacillus thuringiensis variety is relensis. It is also a thuringiensis species, uh, but which is uh, effective against dipteran flies. Israelensis is effective against dipteran flies. That's why 
patho variety we have to check on which is uh, which uh, class of insects it works that is very important bacillus thuringiensis variety galleria is uh, it is uh, effective against beetles and weevils galleria is uh, effective against beetles and weevils so thuringiensis and karstaki are effective against lepidopterans israelensis is effective against dipterans and galleria is effective against coleopterans beetles and weevils so by checking that this uh, which pest is in the field and which species is to be used which patho variety is to be used is to be chosen so entomopathogenic nematodes these are very very broad spectrum ones especially two genera of entomopathogenic nematodes stener nema and heterorhabditis are available stener nema is for stationary insects and not only stationary moving insects also which can come in contact with the stener nema that is the more important point its foraging ability is it is it will wait for the insects the insects which are coming in contact to it it will attack but heterorhabditis it can move to the ground it can move in the ground especially for the white grub and white grub that is called uh, root grub it is very important based on its uh, carbon dioxide release levels during the respiration because of the chemoreceptors it can move and attack the white grub so heterorhabditis is for the insects like white grub which is uh, inside the soil so these two species are very very important heterorhabditis and stener nema they are associated with bacteria inside i am going to give a detailed presentation of the heterorhabditis and uh, stener nema uh, their foraging ability the species which they can attack how they will attack how they will kill the insects why these are very important in organic farming these things i will explain through a ppt then there you can see with the photos and everything coming to the viruses for the pest management even this also two viruses are very important helicorpa and pv and spodoptera and pv helicorpa and pv is very specific to the helicorpa pot borer spodoptera and pv is very specific to the spodoptera litura even spodoptera fusiperda and pv is also available but in india its usage is less mostly spodoptera litura and pv and spodoptera helicorpa armigera and pv are mostly used again as this polyphagous pest criss cross is also not effective helicorpa armigera and pv is effective only against helicorpa armigera it cannot control any other insect not even spodoptera litura even spodoptera litura and pv also it is not effective on any other insect except spodoptera litura very specific even it cannot attack spodoptera fruziperda or helicorpa armigera we should be very clear regarding the action of these npvs in our next session let us see about natural enemies that is friendly insects as the biological control agents thank you signing off srilata